Hey gang, welcome back to another EDH gameplay video. This week I'm very fortunate to be joined by Kevin and Brian, and a new player, Adam, who is not to be confused with the other Adam who plays Derevi, but this Adam also plays a band deck, Adam. This week, I'm on the Duretti game plan, Kevin is playing his newly made Geth deck, Brian is playing Doran, and Adam, again, not the other Adam, is playing Rafika the Many. For my opening hand, I kept a Torbman's Crypt, a Mountain, Buried Ruin, Unstable Obelisk, Great Furnace, Mind Stone, and Rings of Bright Hearth. Kevin's opening hand consisted of four Swamps, Cabal Coffer, Living Death, and Liliana Vess. Brian's head had two Swamps, Command Tower, Behind the Scenes, Axebane Guardian, Meek Stone, and Wakestone Gargoyle. Adam kept a hand with Karametra, Ghostly Prison, Night of the Reliquary, Chromatic Lantern, Plains, Winterland Harbor, and Island. I win the die roll, so let's get into it. My first turn sees a mountain come into play, but unfortunately I don't have any cheap rocks, so I pass to Kevin. Kevin follows my example, plays a swamp, and passes to Brian. Brian ruins the sweet harmony that we'd created, playing a command tower, then casting Meekstone. What happened to no turn one plays? He then casts Shield Sphere for free, because it costs zero. Adam, seeing how all the cool kids play, plays an island, and passes to me. Since all bets are off at this point, I play a Great Furnace, cast the soul ring that I just drew, and then cast Mind Stone off of the soul ring. This would have been much better had it been turn one. Kevin plays a swamp and passes to Brian. Brian also plays a swamp, then casts Warmonger's Chariot. He passes to Adam, who plays a Hinterland Harbor, and passes to me. For my turn, I played Berry Ruined, then, using my Mana Rocks in a Mountain, cast Duretti. I used Duretti's plus two. I pitch Unstable Obelisk to draw a card. Kevin plays a swamp and passes. For his turn, Brian plays Godless Shrine untapped, taking two. He casts Doran and then passes to Adam. Adam plays a Plains and then loses the contest between he and Kevin on who can play the longest without having to cast a spell. He casts Ghostly Prison and passes to me. For my turn, I tick Doretti up by two but don't pitch anything. I cast Arcbound Ravager and follow him up with a friend, Scarecrone. I pass to Kevin. Kevin plays Cabal Coffers and passes to Brian. Brian plays a Plains for his land and then casts Behind the Scenes. He swings Doran at Doretti. With his attack phase over, Brian passes to Adam. Adam plays Sunpetal Grove and then casts Chromatic Lantern, fixing for days. My turn sees a lot of action. First, I cast Meyer Retriever. Then, I uptick Doretti by two, pitching Tormod's Crypt to draw a card. I then follow that up by casting Koth of the Hammer. I use Koth's plus one ability by untapping the only mountain I have. I pass to Kevin. Kevin plays a Swamp and then casts Expedition Map. This is a sign that I should have taken to use Ghost Quarter on Cabal Coffers. Brian plays his own Sunpill Grove, and then casts Axebane Guardian, who can generate a ton of mana in Doran. Moving to combat, Brian swings Doran, killing Koth. Brian passes to Adam. Adam plays Yavamaya Coast for his land for turn, and then casts Karametra, Goddess of the Harvest. For my turn, I use Doretti's minus two, killing Meyer Retriever to bring back Unstable Obelisk. I also get to return Tormod's Crypt to my hand. Paying two mana, I cast another mana rock, this time in the form of Thought Vessel. I pass to Kevin. Kevin plays the Urborg that he found with Expedition Map during Brian's combat step. Using the now super strong combo of Cabal Coffers and Urborg, Kevin taps three lands to produce six mana, casting Geth, Lord of the Vault. He passes to Brian. For his land, Brian plays a Swamp and then casts Wakestone Guardian. He activates Wakestone of Guardian's ability before going to combat. Moving to combat, Brian swings Doran at me, Axebane Guardian at Doretti, and Shield Sphere or Sphere Shield or whatever you want to call it at Kevin for six. Adam doesn't play a land right away on his main phase and instead casts Knight of Reliquary, who gets to go tutor for a land from Karamrecha anyway. He finds a forest. He then plays Port Town, revealing Temple Garden from his hand. Unhappy with the amount of ramp that he's done, Adam follows that up by casting Cultivate, cause, you know, lands. At the end of Adam's turn, I crack Mindstone to draw a card. My main phase sees Meyer Turbine hit the field. With nothing else, I pass to Kevin. At this point, Kevin reminds me that Geth targets artifacts as well as creatures. He takes my Mind Stone and makes me mill two. Kevin plays Mystifying Maze and continues to sit back and wait. Brian plays a land for his turn, then activates Wakestone Guardian and goes to combat. He sends Wakestone at Kevin, Doran at me, and Shield Sphere at Adam. We remind him that he has to pay two. Kevin responds, generating seven mana and using Mystifying Maze on Wakestone Guardian. In response, Brian generates four mana with Axebane Guardian. He flashes in Jeskai Barricade, bouncing Doran back to his hand. 
With his remaining three mana, Kevin uses Geth to take my Mire Retriever. I have to mill two cards. One of those cards is Mindslaver. As a result, no one takes damage, and Brian recasts Dor in his second main phase. Adam plays an island for his turn, then uses Knight of Reliquary, sacrificing a forest to go find a land. He finds Rogue Passage, which is an all-star in any Rafik deck. Adam then casts Swift Foot Boots. He casts Rafik and then equips him with the boots. Adam swings the now active Kerametra at Kevin. Not wanting to take 14 damage to his face, Kevin blocks with Geth. In response to his block, Kevin activates Geth, taking my Command Sphere and making me mill 3. Kevin lets Geth go to the graveyard. For my turn, I don't play a land, but instead pop Unstable Obelisk, blowing up Brian's behind the scenes as a show of goodwill to the table. With no land in hand, I pass to Kevin. Kevin plays a Swamp for a turn, then using my Mana Rocks and three of his lands, casts Living Death. In response, I use Arcbound Ravager to sacrifice both creatures, making them go to the graveyard. Unfortunately, the Living Death is much more punishing for Brian and Adam than it is for me and Kevin. Kevin returns Geth, and I get back Scarecrow, Arcbound Ravager, Kuldatha Forge Master, and Solemn Simulacrum. With nothing else, Kevin passes to Brian. Brian drops a land and plays Doran for five. He passes to Adam. At the end of Brian's turn, I make a 1-1 Mire with Mire Turbine. For his land, Adam plays a Darkest Waste, which means that he hasn't missed a land drop this game. Adam's first main phase sees Sun Titan coming down. He returns a forest to the field. He equips Sun Titan with boots, and I take the opportunity to smack talk a little bit. Before his combat step, Adam pays the four for Rogue's Passage, making Sun Titan unblockable. He declares attacks, swinging at Brian. He targets Knight of the Reliquary with Sun Titan's triggered ability. In response, Kevin floats a ton of mana with Cabal Coffers. He returns my Mind Slaver and mills me for six. Not satisfied, he brings out Slowbat as well. With Kevin having had his fun, Adam's attack resolves, and Knight of the Royal Craig comes onto the field. My turn sees a mountain come into play, which is quickly followed up by playing Crack Clan Ironworks, Tormod's Crypt, and Rings of Bright Hearth. Sacrificing Solemn Simulacrum in two Myers, I activate Koldatha Forge Master's ability. I pay two to copy it with Rings of Bright Hearth, finding two artifacts from my library and putting them on the field. I find Spine of Ish Sa and Blightsteel Colossus. Using Spine's triggered ability, I target my Mind Slaver. Unfortunately, Kevin's prepared for this and sacrifices my Mind Stone to slow bad to make it indestructible. With not much of a hand and no other ways to interact with Mind Slaver, I pass to Kevin. Tapping most of the mana rocks he controls, which just so happen to be owned by me, Kevin targets Mind Slaver at me. I protest a little bit and wonder why he's not choosing Brian. Moving to combat, Kevin swings Geth at Brian. Not wanting to lose his general, Brian takes five to the face. Kevin's second main phase sees Life's Finale hit the field, blowing up all the creatures. In response, I sacrifice Spine of Ishsa to Crack Clan Ironworks to get two mana. I use one of the mana to crack Scarecrow and drawing a card. I sacrifice Forge Master to Arcbound Ravager, then Ravager to himself, giving Blightsteel Colossus two plus one plus one counters. Kevin uses Life's Finale's second part to search through Adam's library. Kevin chooses to find Gadok Teague, or Gadok Teague, however you want to pronounce it, Angel Serenity, and Sagarda Host of Herons. Using some of the remaining mana from his Cabal Coffers, Kevin casts Liliana Vess, using her minus two to find a card and put it on top of his library. With his last remaining Swamp, he plays Phyrexian Reclamation and passes to Brian. With his draw not doing very much for him, Brian simply uses the turn to cast Dorn again and passes to Adam. Adam plays Temple Guard in tap, then follows that up with a Rhystic Study. Realizing he needs a blocker or he's gonna die to poison damage, Adam casts Rafik and then equips him with his boots. He passes turn to me, or should I say, Kevin. At the end of Adam's turn, I use Tormod's Crypt to exile Brian's graveyard. I also sacrifice Crack Clan Ironworks to itself because Kevin's gonna blow up my board otherwise. Kevin also responds, sacrificing Command Sphere to draw himself a card. Regrettably, for my turn, I draw Duplicant. Kevin wastes no time paying two mana to swing Blightsteel Colossus at Adam. Adam chumps with Rafik, which technically would mean he'd get 10 poison damage, killing him, but as a result of my poor math skills, Adam lives thinking that he's at 9, and we carry on. In my second main phase, Kevin casts Duplicant, exiling my Blightsteel Colossus. He doesn't pay 1, allowing Adam to draw. Having done enough to both myself and Adam, Kevin passes my turn for me. On his own turn, Kevin plays a Swamp and then casts Rise of the Dark Realms. With all those creatures on the field, Kevin has a bunch of triggers. He uses Angel Serenity first, exiling Doran and Duplicant. Sun Titan also triggers, bringing back Expedition Map. He then uses Leanna's plus ability to force Adam to discard the card in his hand. He then passes to Brian. 
Brian plays a wall, which I can't really recognize, so unless he comments after watching this, I won't really be able to tell you guys what it is. He doesn't pay one, and Adam gets to draw. He then plays aura shards, and again doesn't pay one. With nothing else, he passes to Adam. Adam plays a forest for his turn, and then taps six, casting Dragon Lord Dramoka. With Dramoka offering him lifelink and being a valuable blocker, Adam puts the boots on him. He then casts a foily unflinching courage on Dragon Lord Dramoka, giving the dragon plus two plus two and trample. I mean, it also gives lifelink, but Dramoka already has it, so, you know. With a pretty sweet blocker, Adam passes to me. With my options severely limited, I cast Endbringer and follow that up with Sensei's Divining Top. I don't pay one for either of those, allowing Adam to draw two more cards. At the end of my turn, Kevin cracks Expedition Map to go find Blighted Fen, probably my favorite card of the cycle. He also sacrifices Scarecrow to draw a card. He plays the Blighted Fen for his land. Next, Kevin casts Burnished Heart. Kevin sacrifices Solemn, Burnished Heart, and Kuldatha Forge Master to activate Forge Master's ability. He finds Ashnod's Altar and sacrifices Gadok Teague to it. Using the two mana from the Ashnod's Altar, Kevin activates Cabal Coffers. With a ton of mana, he casts Ingaruk's Wake, wiping the board of all opposing creatures. Moving to combat, Kevin swings all of the creatures he has at Brian, killing him. With Sun Titan's trigger, Kevin returns Expedition Map, which is probably an MVP in this game. Since Brian's now dead, we move to Adam's turn. Adam casts Heliod, and then casts Rafik of the Many. He slaps the boots on Rafik and swings him at me. Kevin responds using Blighted Fen to force Adam to sacrifice his only creature. With nothing else, Adam passes to me. I cast Hellkite Igniter on my turn and swing at Kevin for 5. At this point though, Adam and I both realize that the game is pretty much over, and we concede. So, where to begin? Brian's Doran deck was actually really aggressive and kind of fun. I like seeing all the walls and all the interesting enchantments that you wouldn't otherwise play in a normal deck. Behind the scenes was actually a very threatening card. I didn't think it was going to do very much when he cast it initially, but not being able to block any of his creatures was very frustrating. Similarly, Adam's deck was an interesting take on Rafik. Unlike Brian's, which is just about equipment and swinging with creatures, Adam's deck had a bit of a more bant good stuff feel to it. They might not be the most competitive of cards, but I'm always happy to see the Theros God cards. I'm a big fan of Thassa and Karametra, so it was really cool to see at least one of those. I had a pretty aggressive start with Doretti early on, being able to dump a bunch of mana rocks and have him out on turn 3. However, I did play like a complete joke in the late game. The amount of times that I could have killed Kevin's Cabal Coffers with Ghost Quarter is astounding. Kevin played a really conservative game early on. Having now seen what he kept as an opener, I'm really surprised he managed to get there. He flew under a radar and basically established himself a really strong board position by using Cabal Coffers to generate tons of mana and get out spells early on. Geth also did a ton of work, milling me and getting crucial artifacts to his field. After the game, Kevin really felt like the turn where he was able to use Mind Slayer on me was a huge, huge turning point in the game, and I tend to agree. Technically, yes, Adam should have died, but we could also have made up a house rule that says that there has to be 11 effect damage, so it really doesn't matter in the end. Well gang, I really hope you enjoyed this game. There were a few mistakes, but as always, we had a fun game, played with some friends, played some EDH, and that's really what's important. As always guys, thank you for watching, and please be sure to like, comment, share, and subscribe for more.